One meal a day is a pretty effective way of doing intermittent fasting. OMAD, as it's called, is great for fat loss and weight management, but it also has many health benefits. If you want to know whether or not you get autophagy eating one meal a day, then check out this video. <laughs> Fasting, in general, lowers blood sugar, suppresses insulin, and reduces blood pressure, heals the gut, and activates the autophagy process. Autophagy recycles cellular debris into energy. They say that in order to get autophagy, then you need to be fasting for up to 72 hours and beyond. That may be true for someone who's eating the standard Western diet, with high amounts of carbs and high amounts of calories. But how fast you go into autophagy depends on your particular situation and your body's requirements. Autophagy regulation is dependent on nutrient and growth factors such as insulin, IGF-1, glucose and amino acids. They affect the anabolic catabolic state of the body by regulating the fuel sensors of mTOR and AAPK. How long until autophagy kicks in for you specifically depends on the nutrient status of your body. Whenever you go into energy deprivation and shortage, you upregulate AMPK which leads to autophagy. Getting sufficient energy raises mTOR and blocks autophagy. The longer you continue to fast, the more you're gonna ramp up the autophagy process to a certain extent. Eventually, you will hit a point of diminishing returns, which in my opinion is gonna happen around day 3 or 5. How much autophagy you experience on a daily basis depends on your energy expenditure, how much you exercise, how many calories you're eating, what kind of other stressful activities you engage with, and what are the macronutrients of your foods. Compared to 3 square meals a day, eating once is pretty strenuous. It'll definitely result in a much larger suppression of insulin and blood sugar because you're spiking them only in a single time. But do you get autophagy from eating one meal a day? That would depend again on the nutrient status of your body, which is regulated by the balance between mTOR and AMPK. If your energy stores are semi-depleted every day thanks to not overeating calories, then you'll dip into autophagy faster. If you eat sufficient amounts of calories every day and are maintaining weight or even gaining, then your levels of autophagy are lower. Physical exercise and stressors like saunas or ice baths promote cell turnover and AMPK activation, which speeds up autophagy. Calorie restriction in eating less calories mimics some aspects of fasting, but it may not always activate autophagy because you're turning it off by consuming calories. That's why a smaller eating frequency is always more effective in terms of autophagy because you have a longer period where you maintain this autophagy process and you're not spiking insulin and you're not kicking yourself out of this autophagy process. Whether or not you get autophagy on one meal a day depends on how many calories you're eating, how are you exercising and what are the macronutrients of your foods. Overall, people who are leaner and they have better biomarkers will go into autophagy faster and they experience more of it versus someone who has metabolic syndrome or something like that, then for them it's going to naturally take for longer. At the same time, those people who are already healthy, they don't need to have that much autophagy all the time, versus those who are sick definitely need more of it. What dictates the energy balance of your body depends on your liver glycogen status. The liver regulates most of the metabolic processes in regards to nutrient partitioning, what fuel are you burning, fat oxidation, ketosis, and autophagy. Liver glycogen depletion promotes ketosis, AMPK, and autophagy. When liver glycogen is full, you're burning primarily glucose for fuel, thus having higher mTOR and insulin. In total, there's about 100 to 150 grams of glycogen that need to be burned through before producing ketones and autophagy zones. If you were to do nothing at all and just lay there, you would deplete liver glycogen in about 20 to 24 hours, depending on the person's metabolic flexibility. Therefore, whether or not you're going to hit autophagy on OMAD depends a lot on the macronutrient ratios of the food that you do eat. A higher carb meal that is going to refill liver glycogen is naturally going to take longer for you to hit autophagy. High amounts of protein will also make it longer for you to go into autophagy because you have to burn through the amino acids. And those amino acids tend to stay in your system for longer if you overconsume them. And lastly, when it comes to fat, then that's somewhat insignificant, besides just the massive calorie load. Fat. Ketone bodies stimulate chaperone-mediated autophagy, which targets only specific amino acids and substrates. Beta-hydroxybutyrate and other ketones tend to be high during fasting and starvation, but they're also elevated when eating the ketogenic diet. Being in ketosis while eating the keto diet can support the autophagy process and recycle specific proteins through chaperone-mediated autophagy. Overall, a strict keto diet that restricts carbs and protein will enable you to go into autophagy faster because 
the glycogen is low and you don't have extra amino acids circulating the bloodstream. At the same time, I think that a high carb, low fat diet can also give you some similar results because you don't have extra fat which doesn't slow down the process of digestion and you're gonna just burn through the carbs much faster. You just have to make sure that you're not gonna overspill on glycogen and you're not over consuming calories. Here's how you can get autophagy eating one meal a day. If you eat around your maintenance calories and don't binge, then you'll probably deplete your liver glycogen within a day, as long as you're not completely sedentary. If you go for long walks while fasting and stay active, then you'll speed up the process of getting into autophagy. If you do hard exercise like weights or cardio in a fast state, then you'll stimulate some autophagy even when consuming food. If your biomarkers like fasting insulin, IGF-1 and inflammation are under control, then you would naturally dip into autophagy more often. And, at the same time, lower levels of inflammation and IGF-1 would indicate higher autophagy activation. The most important part is to just not overconsume calories, and you can still get autophagy on any diet. This raises the question, is it worth it to do OMAD for the sake of autophagy? Wouldn't it be smarter to fast for like 3 days every once in a while, and then eat regularly? It is true that you will get more autophagy on a 3-day fast than OMAD, but those 3 day fasts aren't that sustainable if you do them all the time. That's why with things like OMAD or 16 and 8 type of fasting, you're gonna increase the basal level of autophagy and cell turnover, which essentially allows you to maintain yourself for longer without having to fast for these 3 days all the time. In conclusion, yes, you can experience autophagy on OMAD, you just have to make sure that you're exercising, you're controlling your carbs, and you're not over consuming calories. How fast you go into autophagy depends a lot on your own subjective energy status. If you want to know how to master the art and science of nutrient signaling, meal timing, food combining and intermittent fasting, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video, make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well, my name is Seem, stay optimized, stay empowered. This is Sparta!